The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sports Insider. My name is Glenn Spilming. You are listening to us on Armed Radio out of Boston, Massachusetts. And I'll tell you what, man. Friday night, good night, exciting night. Uh, we've got a little bit of a issue here with one of our cameras, but I want to thank everybody on uh, Armed Radio for tuning in. You can... Watch us on Facebook Live. For those of you tuning in to Facebook Live, what's up? We've got special guest. For those of you watching, we've got Jerry Hickman, MMA fighter. And uh, Jerry, say hi to everybody. How's it going, everybody? All it's right. Good to be here. We are trying to get um, our Periscope to go, but it is uh, giving us issues. But that's okay. We're going to be talking um, MMA tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on all aspects, and I do apologize for those just tuning in on Periscope, you getting a little, uh, Gallagher Bears, welcome to the show. I want you guys to ask questions all throughout the show, make comments, so we've got Periscope here, we've got Facebook Live. Um, Jerry Hickman, I met, um... A, uh, we, we met on Facebook. I put a, um, for those of you who watched the show, you know that I am a filmmaker as well. And I'm doing a film called Legends of the Cage After the Final Bell. And I'm doing promo um, videos because there's other aspects of the MMA realm that I'm going to be doing other than the movie. And um, there, uh, he, he, uh, he hit me up, and he's like, hey, man, um, I'm interested. And I'm like, so I create a dialogue with him. I'm like, hey, let's meet at Starbucks, and let's talk things over and see what's up. So I invited him to come on the show. He's got a very interesting story for one. And uh, number two, on my I, – and I've talked several times in life about dreams. And I've talked several times in life about doing – just things in life. Never too late to start your dream. Never too late to do anything. Steve, welcome to the show. So, Jerry, you're going to prove my point here in a second. When I say it's never too late to get in and do anything in life, how old are you right now? I'm 39 years old. Doesn't look 39, does he? He uses Oil of Olay. <laughs> so, hey, Oil of Olay, if you guys want to be a sponsor, hey. Um, when, at what age, Darling Rosin, welcome to the show. At what age did you dive into, what the crap, let me see your phone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what the crap is this? Niners. Anyone that watches the show <laughs> knows I'm a freaking Raider fan. And um, that's okay, man. That's okay. I'm not going to kick you off the show. Um, that's okay. Um, I'm busting your balls. Um, what age were you when you dove into uh, the MMA? I was 35. 35? Yeah. Wrestling, any combat sports prior to credit. Legacy for him. I had always <laughs> talked about being in boxing, wrestling. I never went through with it. Uh, so when did you first um, think, hey, I would like to do this and this? So when you never did it, mm-hmm. how old were you when you thought about it but never did it? I was young. I was uh, all growing up. You know, I thought a lot. You where'd, know? You, where'd you grow up? Uh, Del Paso Heights. Del Paso Heights. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you 
who know anything about the Sacramento area. And for those of you who know about Del Paso Heights, Del Paso Heights doesn't have, or no, excuse me, Oak Park is a very rough, or at one time was, it still is a little bit, a rough part of town. Oak Park has nothing compared to Del Paso Heights. So when he says he grew up in a neighborhood, I know the neighborhood personally. Um, there are cops that say, don't go to Del Paso Heights during the day. During the day. Um, I actually went on a, uh, a, a meeting in Del, uh, off Del Paso uh, Boulevard. I have a red car. Um, going into Del Paso area in a red car. So that's all I'll say about that. But he grew up in a rough neighborhood, fought a lot. So why didn't she go into the MMA as a, as a, why, what derailed you from not doing that as a kid? So, uh, our stereo. What kind of stereo? <laughs> the Alpine? Man, it was back then, uh, I think it was just a regular tape deck, you know, out. So did you sell it to, to sell to make money, or did you sell it because you liked it and wanted to put it in? I, I had just bought a car, and a car, oh. you know. And well, there you go. I was a kid, yeah. So, uh, sold the stereo. Little did I know that because the car was under a carport. Wait a minute. Recharge. So, you've got a carport, which is open. Mm -hmm. Did not go in a garage, but since it was connected to the house underneath it, it's considered burglary. Burglary. Where'd you go? Uh, So, why do you think that they laid the hammer down on you? It was in a real nice neighborhood. Huh? Yeah, so. So, yeah, I feel, you know, they used me as an example, but if I would have never done it, I would. That's what derailed me. And then, uh, that, you have to survive. Right, yeah. You know. And getting out, just trying to, after being five, get it. Right. Uh, so that was my struggle for many years, is just to make it, you know. So I went to have my class, and <laughs> they closed the school, like, right after I graduated. Wow. Well, real quick, I want to welcome Johnny uh, Blender to the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Blender has got a show on Arms Radio every Wednesday night at um, 8 o'clock Eastern um, called Whiskey Cars and Cigars. So thank you for tuning in. So when you went, so how long were you away? Uh, for uh, a freaking stereo. Wow. I was, I was, and, uh, so when I got out, like I said, it was just trying to find my way and make out ever going back to that place. Uh, luckily, I ended up. Well, first I was bouncing. Uh, and she reported every one of my thoughts, dreams, fires, you know. Driving force really behind. What's up, Steve? If you got a question, brother, go ahead and ask. So your wife, 100% throughout the entire journey, once you met her, has been 100% supportive. That was how, how, before I dove in, always watching fights, I was, so she knew how, My new trip. 
doctor, every every role that a fighter can have. He says that kind of support is amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, when you have a wife or a husband that supports you 100% in the career choice that you made, how important is that, number one, and how important is that to you? How has it driven you? Oh, it's, it's driven me more. I want, always want. But her belief in supporting me are that, you know, I feel like I can do anything. Have somebody that, because uh, you don't have. It's a hard sport, so you have progress you're making. Always been there. And speaking of always, welcome to the show, Christina. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. That's the one. Supporting right there on Facebook Live. Thank you for tuning in. So go ahead, continue. Yeah. So uh, even I started doubting myself, and I have my rough patches. She's right there. To She's my, um, you know. How have you been married? Well, we've been, we're, we're not officially married. Oh, she, okay. keeps, she keeps ducking. Everybody knows. So she's kind of got a fighter. <laughs> she's got fighter in her too. She's kind of ducking the yeah, last thing a little bit. Good movement, yeah. Um, it's my fault, you know, the kids and everything. So, But we've been together for seven years now. Nice. We're about to have our seventh hour. Nice. When's your uh, anniversary? I'm glad he remembered that, uh, Christina. <laughs> I'm sorry, wait. Uh-oh. Oh my Crap, God. and you did it on freaking... On TV. Oh, God. Oh. So it's April 4th. April 4th. Yes. Birthday is my See, birthday. if we were making a movie, if we were making a movie, we'd be like, cut, take two. Edit it. Yep. Uh, Casey Spears from Austin, Texas tuned in. She says hello. Casey, if you have... Uh... <laughs> she says... Um... She's <laughs> Christina says, no, he keeps me having babies. I told you it's my fault. <laughs> well, hey, you know, he's a 49er fan. He's got to get these kids growing up and get, get someone good on the freaking 49ers. Yeah. Joshua T. Berglin, welcome to the show, brother. Joshua is the man. I met him on a show last night. He lives in San Diego, California, God's country. And um, Joshua, thank you for tuning in. And again, I implore everybody out there to um, to ask questions throughout the show. Um, our guest tonight is uh, Jerry Hickman, MMA um, fighter, um, up and coming star, and um, we're gonna make a movie star out of this guy too. Um, so thirty nine, you got in at thirty five. Four years, ladies and gentlemen, 35 years old. When you are in a sport, I played sports growing up. When you hit that 30 mark, they're like, you're a grandpa, you're old, don't even try it. So, let's, let's get in our time machine, step back four years. You're 35 years old, you go, you know what? I want to be an MMA fighter. What kind of opposition, if any, from anybody and discouragement, if any, did you get? 35. Okay, so not only was I 35, I was 225, and I smoked. 225. I'm not going to say anything because I'm a little bit over 225. But I am also shorter. <laughs> so, um, people didn't take me seriously. Uh, just uh, my, my woman, like I said, she's the only one that always heartedly. Uh, people thought I was joking, you know. They were like, thought I was going through a midlife crisis. Fighting now, you know, it's a sport. Right. That. Yeah. Tell Randy Couture that. Yeah. And and I, myself, I don't feel old. I feel anyone. I still feel uh, Joshua says, dude is rocking the black suit. Awesome. And on a football note, because we were talking on a different show last night, he's like, for your information, the Patriots will lose tomorrow. I'll tell you what, Joshua, we are eight hours apart. There is um, a place in Encinitas called um, um, Juanitas. Been there for forever. But there, we, we'll go to any place you want. Let's make a little friendly bet, brother. If the Patriots win, 
you got to buy me a taco dinner and a beer. And if the Patriots lose, I got to do the same to you. And I will drive to San Diego and do it like I need an excuse to drive to San Diego. Christina says, our first MMA fight we went to together was our friend Mark Matthews. It's, um, it lit the flame. I saw the excitement in his soul. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. His, Christina did not see it in his eyes. She saw it in his soul. She saw it deeper. 35 years old. Um, Joshua says, Encinitas is home of cuddle parties. Fine, we'll cuddle too. We'll cuddle and eat tacos and drink beer on Moonlight Beach. Um, so, Mike Matthews, or Mark Matthews, excuse me, first fight that you went to together. Um, so what else were they saying? It's a young man's sport. You're too old. You're going to get hurt, maybe. Yes. And you're a fat ass. Yeah. You never know. I, I'm out of shape. Uh, so, I mean, I had everything going against me. And so I went and I, I, my, my best friend, her brother is, a. Uh, okay. So, like, well, I can introduce you guys. Daddy, I'm. Like, well, meet me at this park tomorrow at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah. I said, went to the park. For about, months, he put me on a probation because he was right. five years old. Did he think that you, did he ever admit, thinking, you know, man, I kind of thought you were going through midlife crisis? Yes. Oh, he did. Yes. Oh, yeah. He thought I would be he's one of the tougher coaches, like his. His. But, you know. Hey, uh, Joshua, no, he's not out of shape now. He's saying he was out of shape. Not now. You, you were 225. What do you weigh now? Well, what are you walking at right now? That, because of my injury uh, that I'm just, I am just up at 195. Okay, 195. What do you want to fight at? I fight at uh, 545. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so you go, you're training with this cat. Yeah. Did you at every point in time be like, I don't know if this is what I want to do? No. No? No. no. Oh. Not even, never, never, uh, once I got a taste of it and what it was about, I mean, I was, I was all in, fell in love with it. I would rather do it. <clears throat> I wish that I would have got it. Where I would be, you know, but uh, I never doubted it. I I always best I could. I wanted to go for some kind of title shot. That probably not. Nah, nah, well, don't say it. Don't we'll don't put that out there. All right. Now let's talk about that because you told me the story about the the jujitsu. So so talk about that. So uh, my. My MMA coach. Best ranking black belts out there right now. Okay. Um, so he tells me, you know, wrestling and all that. Like, well, I want you to go to this jiu I go in there, and just like the MMA, I mean, I took to it and faster than most. Together, we <clears throat> tournaments, five tournaments. Um, and it's been a blessing being able to be surrounded by these top ranked time and effort. I believe in my I'm just blessed to have been brought into their company. Well, real quick, I want to welcome Brian Moore to the uh, to the show. Um, Nate Wren, our uh, Southern California correspondent, welcome to the show. Um, Brian Moore, 
Say hi to Jerry Hickman. Brian Moore is the uh, the founder and owner of Legends of the Cage. He's the gentleman that inspired me to do this film. So, um, oh <clears throat> Brian Moore, welcome to the show, brother. Um, so, you, you got in, got the taste for it. You got this coach now who's, who, who, who's thinking you're going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> and so, you go in. Now, we're going to bounce back and forth a little bit. <clears throat> now, what I'm about to say is going to sting a little bit, yeah. but it's reality. Yeah. You lived it mm -hmm. on... August 24th, 2013. Step into the Ultimate Reno Combat, number 43. Main card, welterweight, 170 pounds. Okay? You're fighting um, Arison Perry. Okay? Good friend of mine. So, in, at 2.37, round one of three rounds... KO, TKO, knee. Bam. Done. You start off your career 0 and 1. <clears throat> 35 years old, going through all this training, doing all of these things, step into the octagon, you lose your first fight. What's the first thing that goes through your head when you come to reality? What? I did not follow the game plan. That what did you just say? I did not listen to my right. That we had. Why? I was stubborn. I'm hard headed. Well, I'm not no more. I was. I was hard headed, and uh, like I said, I was a. I was a. Na I fought a lot, and so I was still rough around the edges. And <clears throat> all that training <clears throat> that I did kind of went out the window. The first punch I can. So let's talk about that real quick. The first punch that you connected with, the first time that you're in the octagon, August 24, 2013, you bash Arison Perry right in the face. How does that make you feel? Does that freaking jolt you up? Oh, it's great. It's There's no feeling in the world that compares to... I like getting hit. And that's in the house. house. Some people don't understand it, but I don't believe it's right <clears throat> tell you. Let me ask you a question, and this is this is kind of a uh, maybe a psychological, physiological question. But seriously, though, you said that you like getting hit. I think there's a reason for that. Maybe it stems from something. Maybe it's a little bit of the pain that maybe wakes you up, wakes that person inside of you up. Well, you know, I was always. Ah. You know, that is, you know, not something to run from. Boy, <clears throat> actually, living at, at every sense heightened your. I don't. I I hear the all I hear is the phone. So you um we we've got a uh maybe let's see if it's a question or something. Christina says he also went up a weight class just because he wanted oh. to fight so bad. So that's person Perry. Mm -hmm. So, so my what, fighter, 170, okay. So my fighter, I was supposed to fight at 55. Two so days, you went up 15 pounds. Two days before the fight, I had already cut my weight. fighter fell out. Okay. They contacted us. I had already had people going. fighter went fell out. 70. You know, because I just wanted to. Right, and that, that is not uncommon, ladies and gentlemen. At any fight card on any level, I don't care if it's all the way to the UFC Bellator, at any level, the day of or the day before, 
I mean, not today. Well, at any time, a fighter could fall out, and there's phone calls being made frantically, and you got one of them. I got it. So you're 155, and you got to bump up to 170. Yeah. So How'd you do it? Uh, I weighed in with my clothes, and I still only made it like one six. I have this way. Because I wanted to fight. I had worked so hard. I that opportunity. Right. That, that's a good thought. <laughs> Brian Moore asks, is asking you, if Jerry could fight anyone in the world, any organization... What would his dream match be? Good freaking question, Brian. Dream match. Hmm. Oh, I never thought of that. That's why Brian's in the house. <laughs> Stimulate you, your brain. Thank you, Brian. Put me on the spot. Let's see. Uh, you know, there's a guy that I fought early in my career. Love that rematch. Was the wrestler wrestling okay. the whole fight? Um, I got back up eight of the nine times. I had never been out. He just tired me out. Like, wrestling. That's what they do. Right. And so he. Okay, uh, next question. Which fighters did you look up to? Oh, man. The... Ah, Chuck Liddell. Yes, Chuck Liddell. Uh, Jack Gracie. Abbott. All these guys, that, they were fighters, man. They <clears throat> knock each other's head. That's what I'm about. I'm a. I'm the kind of guy. Win or lose, you know, I go to fight. Right. You know. And okay. This this bring in a legit question here. Your first fight, you lose. In some people's eyes, that's a failure. A loss is a failure. But if you lose a fight, ladies and gentlemen, or a game or anything like that, it doesn't mean you lose. It means you learn something. Um, so, when you lost this fight, August 24, 2013, did all the naysayers come back to you and be like, I freaking told you. You see, now you need to go back and do something that, that makes money and take care of your woman and your kids and all that. You need to, you, you did what you did, now let's walk away. Yeah. Oh, man. There was a lot of them. And, uh, like I said, and I had doubts myself. You know, outcome, you know. Uh, but... I rock, Christine. How to do this? What did she say to you? That it, it's nothing. That she. Like I was supposed to take care. Grappling was better. I was supposed. To guy that was. Wow. Wow. Fight night. That would make me look short. Sure. <laughs> about 200 fight night. Wow. That was the first time I ever seen it. That's a funny story. So, we're weighing in. I'm on the scale with all my clothes and my sandwich, and the guy comes. Like I said, he's all guy, cutting down to 170. So Uh, you know, right. Like, so I'm like, yeah, he's tall. Right. So you know, everybody asked me, so what do I look guy? You know, right. And so fight guy come. I didn't see no actual walkouts. So he's walking out to the cage. You know, right. Because he's. Looked like he ate my opponent, you know. Wow. Yeah, because uh, 
the IV bags were still put on a good 20 pounds. In yeah. And uh, so that was my first real uh, view how the big guy is because I think I put on me. Right. You know, just scouts. And uh, so, but like, when I lost that fight, I doubted myself for a second. She told me, doubt me for a second. She knows. Right. <laughs> you know, because uh, she knows how hard headed I can. Yeah, so. Um, from there. Oh, well, I think. My well, your next was fight was actually. Um, well, one was the the Marty Awesome was canceled. That was uh, the bread for battle. Yes. But then, same um, fight. Almost, uh, but you lasted three rounds um, yes. this time. But a minute thirty-five in the third round. Uh, against Anthony Taylor. That's the wrestler I was saying. 155. Again, main card light um, lightweight. Again, KO, TKO. Um, but you went two rounds further than you did prior. So you, you're still getting up there. Um, so that's the guy that, that you lost to. That stung a little bit. Um, the next fight... Um, you go, and it was canceled with uh, Mitchell Lund, but then you get David Scuba. So you go into David Scuba, 0-2. David Scuba had no fights. O O and O. Um, before I get into that, real quick, Christina says, his dream prof is professional fighting. He won't give up on dreams. Also, even when he loses, people love his fights because he's super intense. That's what I like to see in a fight. And I always tell people that watch the show, and you will always see me say this. I don't care. Well, especially like in the UFC um, fights in Bellator, when I always tell everyone, watch not just the prelims, watch the early prelims. Because these are the guys that are going and stepping up, and they want to get to that main car. They want to get to, um, because it's sad, and it really kind of pisses me off, because you go to the early prelims, and then I may be, you know, hardly anyone in the arena. And that's disrespect. If you've got a guy that's a fighter that puts in the time, puts in the training, it doesn't matter if he's early prelims or the main card, he's still on the freaking card. So all you fight fans out there, get out to the freaking arena and watch these early prelims. So let's step to David Scuba. You lose a uh, decision. It's a unanimous decision. You go three rounds, um, and you lose. And every fighter, and I've, I've interviewed over 100 fighters, and I always ask them the same question. And we talk about um, 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 a decision. Of course, it's not your freaking fault it went to a decision. You didn't go into there going, you know what? I'm going to fight for three rounds. I just want to see what the judges say. Well, let's see who wins. Fight. You're fighting hard. And um, as Christina says, you fight with intensity. When you hear the decision go Scuba's way, what are you thinking? Oh, on that one. Happened was it? Bell rings. Our dance dropped my hand. Yeah, I had dropped my hand. Hit me up, and and that's key. A knockdown is key, or a takedown is key. A lot of times, they will look. Unfortunately, they will look at the knockdown takedown. More than, well, um, Jerry landed, you know, freaking 40 key shots on this guy's right. skull. The, he had two other takes. As far as, like you were saying, right? mm -hmm. we were saying that. I mean, proud, pleasing fight to watch. Uh, but he did get the better of me. 
because of the taking. That's, I know what, what I didn't have. Uh, but I mean, hats off to the guy. He's I, uh, not going to Well, um, um, Brian says, the heart it takes to enter the cage is something few possess. Real fighters are a rare breed. Hashtag respect. So you got the freaking uh, Brian Moore, founder, owner of Legends of the Freaking Cage, giving you mad respect, brother. And um, and and, um, and he also says Legends of the Cage is going to be awesome after the final bell, the film. And so you get the decision. And then now, though, see, things are starting to seep into your brain now. First fight, lose. Second fight, canceled, but then you get another one. Lost that one. Next one, canceled. The next one, though, you go three rounds. Decision goes cat's way um, and because um, of takedowns, knockdowns. But now you got three losses under your belt. You're now 0-3, 35 years old. Going into MMA, don't have anything prior to that except street fighting and fighting when you were on vacation. Right. And um, and now the naysayers are really jabbing you. They're like, dude, bro, come on. Three, if we're playing baseball, three <laughs> strikes, you're out. Three outs, you're, the inning's over. Yeah. Hang up the freaking glove, brother. What are you thinking? What does Christina say? Your, your, your rock that made you keep going, that these naysayers that should just shut their pie holes, what does Christina say to make you want to go? As my, my workout clothes, loves me out. You're better than that. Learning. You know, it doesn't matter what you're Those kind of things, like personally, uh, I like it. That's the key because you like it. Um, Christina says each fight was so close, couldn't catch a break. Now, um, do you do you ever? Because you know, Christina's your 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 rock, your motivator, your everything, did at any point in time, and I and I know this in relationships and friends and this, that, and the other, mm-hmm. you, did you ever think, well, she's just doing that to, to make me feel better, you know, she's just saying that, or was she just flat out, you know, she probably said, okay, you did this and this, you needed to listen to your freaking coach the first time, but just get out there and freaking bang it, you know? Almost two years to the day, about, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe nine days earlier, almost two years to the day, August 15th, 2015, almost two years to the day to where you first stepped into the octagon. Go to the Bread for Battle, Roots of Combat, main card featherweight, 145, you step in the ring, with Mitchell Lund. I'm not going to tell the result. I want you to tell the story. So this was the first time I actually listened to my coach. Up to the game. Drives into me at high camp. Um, now you can get a victory from that. So working, warming up back. He's. Strikes to get close, you take it down, and we can. So, there, that fight, I actually. A lot of procedures. Oh, wow. And, and, right, wheelchair bound. Fights, so right, you know, and fights so he could be 
bring him. And uh, I remember walking by by him, bowing, because he was right. Got in there. That bell rang. Touched gloves, and I did exactly what my coach trained me to do. I used close the distance, pressed them against Got the tape down, and I think got the pull mat. Ryan says the support system you have is awesome. Much respect to Christina as well as for backing him in his pursuit of his dreams. Christina says he's a little hard headed, and um, so you get your first victory. Now you have your first victory. Your um, one and three. Um, now, what do your naysayers say? They're like, oh, man, that was a good job. It's now now you can stop. You know? Oh, you got your win. You got, you got okay. Yeah. You stop now. You did what you wanted to do. Okay. Yeah, time to get out now. You know, to end on top. And uh, I'm not ready for that. I, I feel, personally, I have years. So I stopped <clears throat> evolving as a fighter. Not being able to right. you know that stops I might think about it I still feel I'm growing I'm all constantly and until that stops then I I don't want to regret You don't get to go on vacation and again. And people cheer for it. You yeah. Know? So, I mean, there's nothing I would rather be doing. Got a good... My hobby, you know. And let's... Your job allows you... You're training and you're fighting, and they are also supportive of your career. Company team. Fires... Right back to work. Oh wow! You know that's cool, man. You know, and uh, and what's the company again? TNS. TNS. Give a good shout out to freaking TNS, man. That's awesome that you let this cat do that. Yes, and they helped me. They actually uh, because they are a big <clears throat> company. They my fight shirts for me. The last fight I was supposed to be. They're, they're one of my not big in this. Right. I don't know part of the game. <laughs> and uh, but uh, yeah, TNS uh, for being uh, the suit is for I do I'm day after day I'm going. To, oh, nice! I bounce uh, so. Regular job during the day today. I thought you got dressed up just for me, man. Yeah, Dang, I know dude. you did. I know you did. I was <laughs> like, man, when he came in, I'm like, man, dude, I look sharp. Yeah, yeah. No. I got, I got a, I do my bouncing job. That's why I got to dress up. Nice. Yeah. Next fight, five months later. Mm -hmm. Titans Cage main card lightweight 155. Edward Mackey. Let's talk about that fight. Oh man, that was an awesome fight. Uh, Actually, that was farm burner. I think uh, what happened was he was getting frustrated because he started doing a lot of. Uh, wasn't watching where he was. I excited. He tried in the ball. Really? Oh god, it was one of the worst shots I've ever. Buddy. Uh, so after I recovered from that. Then when you know uh, we were on the ground, I back the head. So, uh, well, it was the uh, rest saying that that it doesn't matter MMA, box, or anything. Back that's called rabbit punch, and um, freaking don't do that. 
But obviously, this cat doesn't know how to listen. Right. It just yeah, I think frustration was a big thing. You know, I was supposed to be like, you know. Uh, so fighting, you know, both landing some good shots. Uh, we got into a scramble and uh, ended up uh, him right in front of me. And uh, I disqualified. Yeah. Uh, speaking of bouncing, Brian says Paul uh, Verelands was a bouncer for years. Paul Verelands, um, forty-eight years old from Sunnyvale, three hundred pounds, Woo. and um, so he fights out of uh, Fairbanks. But uh, he was a professional uh, mixed martial artist. So, um, now, let's talk about that real quick. You're going, you're a bouncer, you are an MMA fighter, um, are there, well, first off, do the people know who you are that you bounce at, and they're like, you know, and second off, as an MMA fighter, do you find yourself at a more um, even kill and responsible if something throws off? Uh, they. M- Being an MMA fighter, I, I less like that because of my training, which they actually call me. I get most of my guys out, out force. I can out of the club. Okay. You know? All right. Uh, I'm not talking about giving them a pack as they walk down the street. But uh, with my training, um, I don't, just because I, I know what I know, I do. Mounting, I, striking is a last resort. I, grappling ass. But, but, like I said, I don't have a lot of. Problems with people. I know that. Harder. Right. They come out. And if you bow up at them. Because they're already intoxicated. They're ready for that. Right. You know? So, uh, yeah. Um, Brian asked, just curious, who is Gary taking for Bellator 192, um, Sonin or Rampage? Ooh, see. I like Sonnen. I'm an old school Rampage fan. That fight right there. Oh, Rampage. Yeah, me too. I'm going to go Rampage. Yeah. I think Rampage. Now, let's go with um, a lot of fighting in August, man. August, August, August. So. <laughs> August 13th, 2016, Titans of the Cage 13, main card, catch weight, 160. Michael O'Leary, 4 and 3, you go in at um, 3. 158, round 1. Joke, submission. Submission. Oh. What happened there? So, that fight, man, I gotta say, I was the most ready for that fight, I think. No, oh, I, I think I kicked him in the stomach. He shot in for a takedown, got me down. I went for the reversal. The, the scramble of me reversing and going on top. The key. And this is what Michael O'Leary, all mad wow. props. I punched that. I watched the take. Really? Right. You know. I'm punching literally until I couldn't breathe about a minute. All 
that punching that, that everything was taking it out. It was no breath. I had I was already wow. my breath. But you know what that you did that I really respect, but you didn't do. I should say, tap out. Didn't tap out, and I'm and and me. I think, and that's why I think it's funny with the Diaz McGregor whole freaking feud. I think it's funny that Diaz didn't just win; he made Conor McGregor tap out. Yeah. Now it's one thing to get a good shot and get knocked out. Yeah, I'm a man. I get knocked out. So what? He got a good shot, but you tapped out, right. McGregor, and you didn't. Now, was there at any point in time you're like, okay, I'm gonna tap out, or were you saying, no, I'm gonna freaking go out. I'm gonna punch this guy until I go out. It was. It was in my mind. It was just. Let's go or loosens up a little bit. Never happened. <laughs> you know, it was it was punch, punch, punch. <laughs> you know, and then I just I like I said, props to the kid. A lot of guys would right. you know, because I was all face. Uh I mean, any other way we would have Christina says he never does he never gives up and that's awesome and um, I like to see that in a fight I like to see that in any athlete period now what's been going on since August 13, 2016 we are now I know you got injured but we are now in 2018, so kind of guide us through what's going to happen with Jerry Hickman in 2018. Well, 2018, I plan on knock off all this win. Wake yeah, up. Feel good. Um, so, your first fight, you come back. What is, without giving away everything, what do you think your game plan is going to be so when you come in and you're going to start 2018 with a win? What are you going to do to kind of make sure and solidify that that happens? I'm strong. I like to think of myself as a striker. Yeah. Right? Because before getting into my parts, I never hey, was a wake up. wrestler. World. Right. In the grappling area. I need to stick. So what do you think um, when you have, because I, I mean, statistics are one thing, but when I'm looking at all these fights, whether it's Bellator, UFC, whatever it is, I look at, you know, people, you know, are they a striker, are they a ground game, um, you know, what's their win ratio, how do they win, did they win with submission striking, so when you have a striker <clears throat> and you have a wrestler <clears throat> fighting, um I think the wrestler always says, I'm going to take this guy to the ground. And do you think the striker always says, I'm going to try and stand up with this guy and strike? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, when you've got a wrestler and a striker, I'm going to say 75, 80% of the time, that's going to be. The wrestler is not going right. to So the striker is going to be sprawl and brawl. Folks, use to get close, and I've experienced it, Taylor. I mean, he's a good guy. Like I said, with buddy who said, "Who would I want?" So one right there because I'm a different fighter. <laughs> so Anthony Taylor, um, well, when was the last time you talked to this cat? Uh, in, in any, it's been it's been a while. It's been. So, I know he went to Bellator. I know he. Uh, 
on uh Okay. Now, if there is one, like these um, guys, girls, whomever, that are growing up, it's like my daughter you saw earlier, um, she wants to get into MMA. She's 16 years old. Um, oh, Christina says he gets in trouble from Coach Brito. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one piece of advice that you could give these up-and-coming um, young fighters, what would that be? Dedicated. Best intention. Our perspective. They see how you, right? You know, from what you feel, you know, but they see it. They can guide. They're trying to guide you in a way, and listen to them. They and for everything they. Have. That was my problem. Not the. Listening, maybe. All right, I listened. All right, so we're gonna die. we're gonna sign off on Boston here real quick, but we're gonna keep you guys on for a minute. Um, but everyone listening on Arms Radio in Boston, across the United States, and around the world, I want you guys to uh, go uh, check out Jerry Hickman, um, read up on him, and go to our uh, Facebook page, Sports Insider Online, watch the video. Um, we're going to be having more interviews with this guy. We are on Armed Radio every single Wednesday and every single Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, if you have uh, more questions, you can go to the Facebook page, Sports Insider Online, ask questions, and I will uh, make sure to get it to this cat and give you guys the answers. Um, so everyone in Boston, we'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. Peace out. <laughs>